I was about to go back and try to smooth it out, but my fiance rushed past security and just boarded the plane. I assumed, not having heard her super clearly, that the attendant had given in and let her on. That was clearly not the case. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go over two entertaining short stories about gals definitely behaving badly. First story, which is told by the guy, is about his fiance who had a complete meltdown on her flight. They were about to go somewhere, and let's just say one thing led to another with her having a big fight with some of the crew and flight attendants on the flight, which had her being thrown off. And it led to this whole thing with him and her and all that. Very entertaining. What a good way to see her true colors before they got married. Second story is about a guy who also had a gal who became his fiance temporarily. They went on a big trip somewhere and he decided to propose to her. However, she didn't like the location where he proposed and demanded that he take back the ring and the engagement and propose to her in a more picturesque area all over again and how that whole thing goes down. So, both entertaining stories, which I'm going to go over more in detail here, and just to show you guys, well, what is out there and what you can be expecting to deal with if you're not careful with your screening process. Now, the first story, <clears throat> with the airplane incident, official title is, Am I the a-hole for pretending to not know my fiancé after she had a meltdown during boarding the plane and was eventually thrown off? He says here, I imagine I'm going to get raked over the coals for this one. Well, bro, you imagined right, because he definitely was. So my fiancé, maybe not for much longer, and I were on our way back from a vacation recently. It was a great time and event everything went off without an issue. That is, until we started boarding the plane. Now I know better, I only bring a small backpack with essentials in case I don't get my check bags. I can survive out of this backpack and it will always pass baggage check <clears throat> for size and weight. I've done a lot of traveling, so this is to why fight the system. My fiancé didn't want to listen to my advice and chose to bring a basically regular size bag that barely fits the standards as a carry-on. But generally speaking, the airline worker doesn't want to deal with the trouble and allows it through. I can tell you right then and there, guys, I never check bags unless I absolutely have to. I always pack the carry-on, and I squeeze as much clothes and stuff that I need, and that's that. I never check anything because I've had things lost, or at least for a while. It's a fucking mess. And if you have to check something, guys, check. You, you have your bag that you bring as a carry-on and put in a few couple days' worth of clothes and essentials. If you lose your suitcase or the airline loses it, you got a few days' worth of clothes bathing suit if you're going somewhere where there's a beach you get the point but to just trust it uh uh no way been there done that so his fiance doesn't want to listen to common sense or logic here she knows better watch this uh, but this time the airline worker was not having it it was a packed flight we were boarding last in economy and it was just a shit show I got through just fine first with my little backpack but I could hear the argument from the boarding tunnel thingy and it was getting heated Oh, what a great one to take along and marry. I was about to go back and try to smooth it out, but my fiancé rushed past and just boarded the plane. I assumed not having heard it super clearly that the attendant had given, given in and let her go, that was not the case. His fiancé, who didn't want to listen to him about size requirements for bringing a carry-on, amongst other things, was getting into a fight with one of the workers there and just ran past through. Yeah, good luck with that nowadays. Uh-uh. They will drag your ass right off that plane. I've seen similar things. So, we found our seats and settled in. I was pretty tired, and I could see, I could tell she was upset, so I kind of tucked into the window and put my hat down and tried to take a nap. But soon after, the airline worker and a cop shows up, and they are not effing around, and want her off the plane. Sounds about right. She tries to plead and cry, shocker, but they're not having it. And maybe in a moment of panic or just plain self-preservation, the cop asks if we're together. And I blurt out, no, shaking my head emphatically. <laughs> I'd say no, too. I got killed dagger eyes from her as she shot up and grabbed her bag and followed the cop out. She was also swearing and screaming the whole way out. One of those. 
Newsflash, you can avoid this whole thing by checking your suitcase or at the, at, as you board the plane and they say, ma'am, your bag is too big. You're going to need, here's a little tag you can put on it and check it and not get into a fight or argument with the airline staff. It, you're not going to win. Now, obviously, this is well after the event. I'm posting this. But when she did eventually get home, she caught the next flight out the, with the bag checked. I was there to pick her up. Yeah, I'm sure that was fun. She obviously thought I was the a-hole, and to be honest, almost everyone I know thinks I'm an a-hole except my boss and my co-workers, who for context were very much relying on me to be back on time, which I gave my word I would be for a really important project that was time-sensitive. They were all very happy that I didn't get thrown off too. So am I the a-hole for this self-preservation? Well, to me, you're asking the wrong guy because people think I'm an a-hole. I say no, because you told her. You flat out told her. You got to check the bag or bring the carry-on with enough clothes in it. But she didn't want to listen. She knew better. She's one of those. Had a tantrum, broke the law, ran past security, got on the plane. They dragged her off. And he's like, nope, I don't know her. He didn't have to be back. And I think there was a part of him that realized, maybe I don't want to be engaged in this crazy bee. Because this is how she is now. Imagine what she's like with other things. And he mentioned before that they get into, she always gets her way, right? So I'd say... I can see how a lot of people would say he's an a-hole, but I personally don't think he's an a-hole. I think you got to use this as a great example, a great red flag as to what his life is going to be with her and uh, and the relationship. But that's just me. I'll let you guys, l- let me know in the comment section what you think. Now, a few comments you to wrap this up. One guy says, not the a-hole. Get out while you still can. This is how she'll be forever. She'll never learn from this experience. No. You can tell she is very hard-headed. And hard-headed people are impossible to be in relationships. Romantic relationships, friendships, business relationships. Hard-headed people, that, that it's my way or the highway. I know everything. Bad idea. Now the guy says, the OP doesn't give their ages. But fiancé sounds utterly exhausting. This can't be the first time the OP has witnessed this type of entitled behavior from her. It has to per- permeate their entire relationship. It's not up to him to parent an adult and try to change her behavior. If I was the OP, I'd be out, or at the bare minimum, postponing the marriage for an extended period of time. Why postpone it? I'd be out. Another guy says here, Whenever she forgets her social decorum, oh no, I would never want to be with someone who A, even acts like this in the first place, and B, is going to act up act up again and needs to be reminded not to. You show me your character the first time, I want a partner who is a mature adult, not an entitled brat who needs to be parented. Yeah, and that's exactly what she is. Now the guy says here, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like her being mad at him for ditching her and not backing her up is an indicator of how much he learned from the whole experience. Like if she thought she was in the wrong, she would have been apologetic to him, but instead he's getting called an a-hole as if he did anything wrong especially with his work stuff and needing being on the flight so they had already been boarded. Exactly. So, I wish this guy all the best. But uh, good luck with a life with her if you stay with her. But I think it's a mistake. A lot of people think he's an a-hole, but I don't think he's an a-hole. But then again, I'm an a-hole. So, go figure. Next story. I told you it was a short story. This is short story day on They Did What. Next story. Title, My girlfriend in three years returned the engagement ring because she didn't like where I proposed. And you're going to see this one, guys. What he does and all that. Now, I'm going to say that, well, I'll say what I have to say to the end. Because I'll let you guys decide and I'm going to say my piece. He says here, I decided to propose to my girlfriend in three years on our third anniversary. I flew her to Vietnam and another couple weeks traveling, we ended up in Cambodia. She had wanted to see Angor, Angor Wat and some other temples that, we were, that were on her bucket list. After a long day of hiking in the heat through ruins, we retired back to our hotel, and we were alone together. I proposed, and she said yes. We kissed, and I had planned to take her to the waterfall the next day to celebrate. It's really beautiful. She took a shower, and I laid in bed thinking what an amazing day I just had, and how I would get to spend the rest of my life with a woman I loved. But. When she came out of the shower, however, she was in tears. She handed me back the ring and saying she couldn't accept it because she didn't want her memory of my proposal to be in a hotel room. (laughs) Moment ago, she's happy. Now she's out of the shower crying. I don't want that memory. Sounds to me that someone realized, wait a second here. 
I don't get to have pictures that I get to put on Instagram and Facebook in front of a temple or a waterfall or something of me getting my dream proposal for my guy. So here's the ring back, and we can do this again tomorrow. Yeah, honey, I can really feel the love you have for me here and being so happy that we got engaged. I played it cool and said I understand, but truthfully, it hurt. It seems to me that I had offered her something of value. A lifelong commitment and a partner. I took her halfway around the world and helped her cross off something she'd wanted to do most of her adult life. I felt like if she valued me, it wouldn't matter that the proposal wasn't exactly what she wanted. So, did this guy have kind of a clue that she might want something like a stupid magical proposal in front of a fucking waterfall or something? I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Yes, he took her around the world, I might add. Other side of the world, to see Vietnam and uh, Cambodia, Angkor Wat, which sounds very awesome, I might add. He says, It was me and our future together she was saying yes to and not my delivery. If she had found a million dollars in a dumpster, she wouldn't throw it back in because of where she, it came from. So she can't possibly value me or what I have to offer as an individual and she's willing to reject it because she didn't like the place I asked. I'm preparing to end things when we get back. There's an idea. She wants me to propose again and better, and then she'll say yes. But I'm done. Am I wrong? Should I do it over? What do you think? Any advice is appreciated. No, you're not wrong. You took her other side of the world, saw amazing things. Things I haven't seen yet I'd like to see. And you proposed to her, and at first she was happy. And then she's back crying and saying she wants you to do it all over again. But you better do it right. Okay, your highness. Uh-uh. You had your chance. I'm not, uh, There are no round two of this. Now for a little update. He says here, Hi, and thank you all for the comments and help. I ended up following the advice of one of my commenters. The conversation with my girlfriend went something like this. He says, me, no, that was my proposal. You rejected it. It's never going to happen again. She said, so we aren't getting married? You aren't even going to propose ever? He says, nope, not ever. I'm glad you were the one I proposed to, and I'm happy that I found the courage to take that step and make such a huge commitment. But no, it was a one-time thing. If you want to marry me, you will have to propose. I decided to see how things went and planned to give her till my birthday, July, to make her proposal, or I would end it and move on. She did while we were hiking on a trail back home, and I accepted. Smack! Should have walked away. This is not going to go... This is going to be a tit-for-tat relationship. That's it for now. Am I making a huge mistake? Yes. Maybe. I'll get a prenup, of course, and protect my assets. If it ends, it won't cost me more than a few hundred bucks. <laughs> In what year? 1922? Hopefully I get many happy years from this. If not, I'll update the post. And thanks for all the comments and support. Weird how much that meant. I also generally appreciate the people that objected to me ending things. It's the internet, so I expect to hear nothing but dump her. Getting, a, getting another more reason, reasonable side to things was very helpful. So, that is the end of his story. Now, I'm going to say this. I went through the comment section because I couldn't resist to see what everybody was saying. And overwhelmingly, people were saying the same thing. Dude, you traveled all the way around on the other side of the freaking world. And yet you propose in the hotel room. Why didn't you just do it in front of the freaking waterfall or a temple or something like that? Now, absolutely, she should be so happy that this good man is proposing to her that that should be it. Okay. The problem is, and that men, a lot of men aren't aware of this, is that women are emotional. And women, as absurd as, as this is, and I get that, I don't agree with it, but I understand. They want the romantic story, the thing they can tell all their friends, the thing they can put on social media and all that. So on that basis, you think this guy knows his girl. So on that basis, whether it was the hotel room or the fucking waterfall, he might as well just propose in front of the waterfall. However, and of course, her getting the tears and all that, that's not that surprising. But the fact that she gave it back to him, said, oh, no, 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 no. You're taking this back and you're going to do it right the next time? Oh, hell no. So he was a bit of a bonehead in that one area, which I can understand. Okay, I'm, I'm fair here, here, especially if you understand women. He got to know his girlfriend. On the other hand, do it all over again? No. One shot, honey. That's it. I'm done. Uh, uh I took your ass over to Vietnam and Cambodia, and you're seeing all these amazing sights. And I propose, maybe he was nervous. Maybe he forgot it. I, I don't know. But 
Here's the deal. A guy ought to know his girl. If you're going to be a relationship guy, you ought to know your girl, especially if you're going to marry her. And you probably have an idea that she something, wants something cool. All right? If they were both Disney people, he would propose in front of the castle or the big golf ball thing at Epcot Center. Not at the fucking Orlando International Airport or in the hotel room of uh, one of the Disney resorts. You're going to do it in front of the castle or the giant golf ball at Epcot. Not rocket science. Yes, she should be happy that she got the proposal and the ring, of course. And leave it at that. But still, yeah, I know her better. And the comment section were full of people saying pretty much the same thing I'm saying here. And again, I try to keep it real and keep it fair here. So, But this sounds like it's just a kind of a childish relationship. And his idea, like, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can always, you know, I'll do a prenup and it only cost me a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, in what decade are you talking about here? And prenups are not ironclad. Newsflash. A lot, a lot of stories you hear about that. But anyhow, guys, I wish him the best. We shall see what happens with him. I'll keep an eye on this one. But it's just funny to me. The ring, but still, doesn't matter. Nope. I want, I want to be able to show that on social media and all that. But you know what? Do it again. No. There's, there's no do-overs here. One-time thing, one proposal. And if, and if he actually did that, I, it would just drive me fucking crazy. Okay, and there are some guys that actually would, okay, honey, take back the ring and then go the next day in front of a place and make it official then. But you're going to do relationships. You're going to be a relationship guy. You're going to get married. Yeah, I know your girl. And if she wants that stupid proposal in front of the freaking waterfall or the Disneyland castle, even though it shouldn't matter, even though, you know, she should be happy that you're proposing, giving her that ring. If you know her, do it in front of the fucking Disneyland castle or a waterfall or a temple. Save a lot of drama. But if she pulls a crap like, if you, but if you propose to her someplace else and she wants you to do it over again, oh, no, 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 no. So, anyway, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and know what you think about this this one particular one with the engagement as well as the other one with the guy who left his, who dissed his wife on the plane. I'd like to hear what you were uh, thinking about that. And, guys, if you, um, have any good stories you'd like to share, by all means, email to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I definitely will when I get a chance. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.